What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about three stocks that I'm looking to swing trade heading into the month of July in 2019. We're also going to be talking about the overall markets right now, what's been going on in the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ. We're going to be breaking down some technicals and giving my personal opinion on what's going on right now. So before we do actually get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there watching is if you enjoy the content, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And I do appreciate every single one of you guys out there watching the content, liking the content, subscribing to the channel, leaving comments. It really does mean the world to me, guys. I'm truly grateful for every single one of you guys out there watching. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. So yesterday, I didn't upload a market update video because I was actually traveling all day yesterday, believe it or not. I actually woke up in Mexico at 5 a.m., took a flight to Fort Lauderdale, had an eight-hour layover, and then landed in Philadelphia literally at 1 a.m. So I've been just cooked from this traveling. I'm pretty tired um, right now. I actually just woke up like 45 minutes ago. I got a nice like eight, nine hours of sleep, and I figured let's just do a market update, guys, because I missed an upload Thursday. Again, I didn't get one on Friday, so let's just do it right now. So without further ado, Let's do it, guys. SPX was up 16 points this past Friday, up 0.58%. The Dow Jones was up 73 points, up 0.28%. And the NASDAQ, I'm not sure if this is what it closed at. Let me just pull up my phone very quickly to double check. But you guys can see it was up 32 points, um, up 0.43%. Yeah, that's roughly what it closed at, about 38 points here, according to my um, Yahoo Finance app. And let's just go back to the S&P, break down some technicals very quickly before we do get into these three stocks. I'm looking to swing trade that are looking very juicy here on a technical basis. So the S&P 500... Hit an all-time high at 29.64. If we go to the five-day, five-minute, we can see the full-on reversal that we are seeing um, that occurred this past week. We all know we had two days of selling off. This was the cool-off that we've been needing, you know, in terms of the market because the market the whole month of June pretty much has been rallying. We got that cool-off this past um, week. We had these two days of selling off. We dumped from about 29.54. Actually, let's go to the five-day or rather the 10 day so we can see it a bit better here we hit the all-time high we cooled off a bit two three days it was actually three days right we dumped we dumped we dumped and now we're seeing the reversal and the bounce on that critical 29.15 level of support that we've been talking about on this channel a lot so you guys can see S&P right now, it's pretty much trading in between 29.15 and that resistance at about 29.60 to 29.65, which was the all-time high. And if we go back to that five-day, five-minute, you guys can see the reversal, right? The 50 SMA and the 180 SMA, both of these levels were acting as resistance levels over these past three days of selling off. We broke out of those levels, making them supports. We're seeing the bullish cross here over the past two days, and again, we had that pretty strong day yesterday of about 17 points to the upside, and we pushed very, very nicely here towards the end of the market. That was about a 10, 11 point swing there on the S&P 500, confirming a higher low from the previous. So you guys can clearly see the reversal that the S&P um, is on right now. And if we go back to the 184 hour chart, I think obviously, you know, if we break, um, if we start to get closer rather to the 2950, 2960 level, and we break that level of resistance, which has been a point of resistance over the past year, you guys can clearly see it. You know, that could be a point in time where we break up for another all-time high here in the S&P 500. But just keep an eye on it again because it's been a strong level of resistance. So once we do get the confirmation of the break, you know, that could be um, a push to those all-time highs. So the Dow Jones, you guys can see it very clearly. It's similar to the S&P. We're at a resistance right now close to that all-time high that we hit back in October of 2018 at about 26.951. We 
sold off from there, popped up again in the month of April, hit that level roughly, sold off again, and now we popped up and hit that level a couple of days ago roughly, if you guys can see here on the 10-day 30, right, we hit that level and we've been selling off for the Dow Jones. And if we go to the five day, five minute, you know, we're not as um, fully reversing as the S&P for the Dow, but we are slowly starting to see um, the right movement that we want to see for the pop up, for the pop out reversal here out of the moving averages. And let me explain what I'm saying here, right? Notice how we hit that high at 26,900. And from there, we were selling off, getting rejected by the moving averages, the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA. And now we we slowly peaked above it. We didn't fully break out of the 180 SMA resistance, but we pulled back and we held a higher low. So that's a good first signal that we are reversing to the upside. We popped up higher high. It got us further out of that 180 SMA, further out of that 50 SMA resistance, which was a good sign. And we pulled back towards the end of the market yesterday and we held a higher low. And again, we saw that nice pop up. So this upcoming week, guys, if you see the futures are up, let's say the futures are green, maybe up 0.5, you know, 0.3%, you know, that's going to be putting us in a position where we're going to be continuing the uptrend. And, and at that point, we may be fully out of this downwards trending pattern right now. It's still pending. But again, if the futures are popping, you know, that could be a full on reversal that we need to see. So the Dow simply trading right now in between 26500 and about 26900 ish this 500 point window right here and obviously if we break out of that level that's going to be pushing us to another all time high for the Dow Jones industrial average Excuse me. So the NASDAQ here, if we go back to the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ, I'm sure all of you guys know this by now, but, the sure, uh, but for the small majority or minority that might not know, this is a tech heavy index. So it's typically, you know, one of the most volatile indexes here. It's typically moving a lot higher than the S&P to the upside and a lot lower than the S&P to the downside when it's a red day. But this day, it didn't really do that, right? It was up 0.43%, and you know, you guys saw the S&P was up a little bit more at about 0.6%. And if we're just going to judge right now the NASDAQ on a technical basis, we're trading between 7,500 and about 7,800. And that $7,500 level, the fact that we held above it is a very strong technical level here. And the fact that we held it at a higher low and a higher low from the previous really just confirming that bounce of the uptrend pattern, that is very attractive as well for the continuation here of the uptrend on the NASDAQ. But notice how we're still trading below the 50 SMA here on the 184-hour chart, and we're slowly starting to creep above it. So for the NASDAQ to even test, potentially test all-time highs and maybe get back to 7,800, we're going to need to see a full-on pop out of that 50 SMA. And as of now, it's it's moving very slowly, but it's still making higher lows and higher highs. And again, we just need that full on pop for the reversal. Going over here to the 20 day one hour, you can see it even clearer here. We're trading be below the 180 SMA resistance, right? We're also going to need to see a pop out of that level for us to test all-time highs and that $7,800 level. Going over here to the 5-day, five 5-minute, five you guys can clearly see the dump. And from there, we've been reversing to the upside very slowly, but surely we're getting to, you know, those levels at $7,800. So that is the overall kind of market update here on a technical basis. The G20 summit is, is wrapping up right now. There's a lot of things in the market that are going on. You know, rate cuts, they could happen here in the month of July. And if that does end up happening, you know, the markets can very well push up to another all-time high. We already know at this point that the market is heavily pricing in a rate cut. Do you guys remember literally a couple of weeks ago, we got news of the Fed hinting to a rate cut and that shot the markets up six, seven, 8% in the matter of a couple of weeks here in the month of July after the markets started to get ugly. So I think, you know, the markets were getting ugly. The Fed was seeing pressure rate cut that stimulates demand very short term fix here and that shot up the markets but again you got to realize guys 
This is a short-term fix. It's not like the Fed's going to cut the rates and then the market's going to continue to run for another two, three, four, five years, right? Typically, the Fed cuts rates when there really isn't other options out there um, to stimulate the economy. This is typically done towards the end of an economic cycle. So be mindful of that, guys. Be very, very mindful of that. So let's just get right into it. Three stocks that I'm looking to swing trade. One of them is actually a Chinese company, and I think this is one of the most risky ones because if we get the slight bit of news of, you know, trade talk, it's negative or anything like that with China and the USA, you know, this can be very well dumping back down. But Alibaba right now, you know, it's looking pretty good here on a technical basis, right? We're slowly starting to break out of the 168 to 169 level of resistance, right? It's looking like we're pulling back and we're holding that level as a new support, as well as this 50 simple moving average here at a higher low from the previous. So take a look at that, guys. The uptrend over the past couple of weeks has been beautiful. We're breaking out of the moving averages. And at this point, you know, we're seeing a bullish cross here on the 184 hour chart for Alibaba and you may be asking yourself what is a bullish cross well a bullish cross is when the smaller time frame moving average in this case the green line this is the 50 simple moving average when that smaller moving average crosses above the larger moving average which in this case is the 180 simple moving average and that is really how you can spot trends in the stock market when you're seeing these crosses so the fact that we're seeing that cross right now that could indicate further bullish um move uh, a further bullish move in alibaba so at this point guys let's draw out some more levels of uh, resistance here you guys can see maybe i guess the next one you can say which we honestly got rejected at this past week is roughly at about 172 173 so the fact that we pulled back to 169 maybe we pull back a bit more to 168 retest that 50 sma you know up to 160 uh 173 from about 168 you know that would offer about a 3 4 percent margin of profit on alibaba and i say you know if the trade talks get better or, or at least you know that's what the media is telling us you know that could honestly pop up Alibaba back into the mid 170s and from where we are now you know that could open up a very nice opportunity for Alibaba so right now it's looking very nice it's reversing nicely out of the moving averages but again being mindful that if anything negative happens with the trade war these Chinese stocks especially Alibaba they can be sent sent down pretty quickly but as of now the technicals are looking pretty good. So another one that I wanted to talk about today was AMD, also known as Advanced Micro Devices. So we saw semi-stocks, semiconductor stocks were under pressure right after AMD hit that all-time high at about uh, $34.30. We sold off all the way down to about $29. We held that 180 SMA support, which is very critical in my opinion because that level has been a support over the past couple of months, really for the whole year of 2019. And we bounced on that level. And at this point, I was waiting because take a look at this guys I was waiting here because the resistance on AMD was right under this 50 SMA notice how we sold off we held 29 we popped up but it was a lower high from the previous and we got rejected by the 50 SMA so at this point I didn't want to get into AMD because this could be a trap here simply because we were still under that moving average resistance but the fact that we held the 180 SMA which was a number one good sign here and we broke out of the 50 SMA resistance and now if we break out of the $31 level of resistance you know this is what I would love to see for a potential retest into the 32s maybe 33 and hey maybe back up to that all-time high at about 34 dollars so amd right now guys if it holds this level of support on the 50 sma heading into this week and that level at about 30 ish dollars which was an old resistance now a new support and we continue to run up into 31 you know this could be a very very good swing trade here over the next couple of weeks heading into the month of july in 2019 so let's go to the last one here intc ticker symbol intc i've been talking about this one a lot this one has gotten 
battered over the past couple of months, guys, from $60 down to about $43. We held that old support. Two supports actually at about $42. Very nice reversal from there. We broke out of the 50 SMA resistance. We held it as a new support. We're seeing the bullish cross here, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. This past week, we sold off from 4850 down to about 47.30. We held a higher low on top of that 50 SMA, confirming that the uptrend is still intact, and now we're bouncing up from here. So I would love to see if... Uh, Intel here is able to complete or rather continue the uptrend and maybe pop up to $49 before pulling back and retesting. So out of the three that I'm talking about here, I think Intel's going to uh, require the most patience because at this point, this may not be the uh, most ideal entry. I would like to see maybe a higher high and then a pullback and a retest before entering into INTC. But I'm really liking what it's doing right now and notice how all of these three stocks that I'm talking about for swing trading, they've all gotten hit pretty hard and they're all reversing um, pretty nicely here. And they all offer a lot of margin up to those highs that they've previously seen. So Intel, it offers about 20% if we get back to $59. Am I saying it's going to go that high again? No, guys, I'm not really looking to get 20% on Intel. Ideally, I would like to trade it up to about you know, $50 which was a previous resistance, pretty strong resistance. And at that point, you know, we can get about a 4 or 5% margin on it. So Intel, I'm loving Intel right now, guys. You know, AMD... I think an ideal exit point, you know, if we're looking on AMD right now, it might be around $32 if we do get that bounce here. And then if we go back to Alibaba, you know, looking at Alibaba, I would like to get in again on the retest of the 50 SMA, maybe at about 168. And from there, I would think a nice sell point would be maybe 173. So those are three swing trades that I'm personally looking to take heading into the month of July in 2019. So I would love to know, what do you guys think about these? Let me know down below in the comment section, what are you looking to trade heading into this upcoming week? If you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, guys, it's the first link down below in the description box. So I'll catch you all in the next video coming out tomorrow. Peace out, everybody. I'm excited to get back to the regular upload schedule, the regular, you know, trading schedule for me. I'm very excited starting on Monday. I'll catch you all. Peace out.